What is up everybody out there? Chris and Josh from Team Aquascape. <laughs> so you can see Josh is one for words, but today we have two Aquabasin installs in one day. Where are you going? Hey, 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 where are you going? <laughs> are you serious? Yeah, no, I'm serious. I'm filming. Come on, everybody out there wants to know. So you can see Josh. Why are you walking away? Okay, anyways, somebody's not ready for camera action yet, but we have two large aqua basin installs today that we're gonna be installing, just Josh and I. We are trying to fill out our service schedule with a couple of small installs. So today, Jenna did a great job of organizing and putting together very efficiently two aqua basin installs. So you can see we've got the two kits over here. They are located about 15 minutes apart from each other. Sounds like one of the holes has already been dug with a previous aqua basin. Sounds like we're just gonna replace that and then put the urn back on top of it so it should be a pretty easy day but I just wanted to show you guys and girls out there how easy and simple it is to make a little bit of cash actually a lot of bit of cash over a small period of time with just two guys and the back of a truck so without further ado let's get going get the product loaded up and get rocking oh boy there's my breakfast champion so we got muffins and then we got another muffin oh there we go Here's our access for the day. So super easy access. Doo, 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 doo. We've got a 36 inch wide gate, which our ball cart will fit through with those basalt rocks. But then here is the scene of the crime or the canvas for the day. However you guys want to look at it, but we are going to be replacing one of our old aqua basins with one of the new ones. And then this is where the trio of basalt columns is going to go. I really love the setting. We've got the arbor vitaes. We've got the arbor back behind. It'll kind of frame it out and really accentuate those three basalt rocks that are going to sit on top of that aqua basin. We are going to change out the gravel. You can see they've got some of that white pond rock that you get from your local hardware stores. We're going to change all of that stuff out. We may use a couple of their accent boulders, but we we are going to upgrade them to Red Flint or Cherry Creek or more of that decorative gravel. We'll have the pump access port here on the front and then we're gonna run that cable all the way around back. You can see the electrical back over there. So we'll change the shape of the gravel and the top of the reservoir to really make it look much more beautiful than what was probably already currently there. It's a total upgrade for them. We're excited to do it and we're gonna make light work of it since the hole is basically dug for us. First things first is one is get that aqua basin out of the ground. We're gonna move all those rocks, pull that gravel away we're gonna get rid of the gravel for them and then get that aqua basin out of the ground and then hurry up and get that other one installed and then we'll start bringing those basalt rocks. So as you can see, we've got the old aqua basin out. It is now time to put the new aqua basin 45 in. We do have a little bit of digging, but that's okay. We're used to it. Aqua basin, then we'll get our basalt rocks set where we want them. We get our holes drilled in the top of the aqua basin, get everything plumbed, and then we'll do the finishing touches, right? This will go really fast. All right, let's go. All right, so we've got the Aqua Basin 45 now installed. You can see we put the pump access panel towards the front. Even though our electric is back there, we do have enough length in the power supply cord going to do that pump to be able to get it back there. The reason I chose to put it up here is from talking with the homeowner, one of the biggest things that he wanted to do was the ease of maintenance. That's why I put the pump access port here on the front corner, which is, you can see the house right there. Just wanted to get it right there. Josh is finishing up moving some of the excavated soil into the back. You can see it slopes very hard away from the aqua basin. So we're gonna use this and then this pile right here to backfill between the arbor just to kind of level everything off. Then we will get our basalt rocks set in place, figure out where we need to drill the holes in the top of the aqua basin to be able to plumb that kink-free pipe up through there. And then at that point, when we get all the plumbing attached, the basalt's in, then it's just finish work, which will take us only a few minutes just to drop all that gravel and really beautify the space, get the lights in that the homeowner's providing and rock and roll. One thing I forgot to mention when doing these aqua basins, we talk about it all the time in in the Aquascape University as well as the Hands-On Academy. And maybe you hear us even talk about it in the videos. But what I wanted to show you is the elevation of this aqua basin. So right now Josh has nice and level across uh, and you can see the gap between the bottom of the level and the top of the aqua basin. We sink these things anywhere from two, sometimes even six inches down below grade in order to give it that nestled feel. It gives us a little bit more dirt, but we don't ever want it up above existing grade. And because what'll happen is we either have to mound soil up to the lip around that aqua basin or we either have to do that or which makes a lot more work for us but what also happens is, is that black plastic lip will continue to pop up over time and there's really not a whole lot you can do about it because things will settle around the compacted soil that kind of stuff we just simply don't want to see that we want it more recessed more natural looking as if it's always been there so just a little pro tip for you all right then As 
you who are watching, Josh and I kind of positioning these basalt rocks, what we're looking for is a couple of things. One, what we're concentrating on really is just kind of the natural tops of these rocks, trying to figure out where the water is going to want to go over the top so that not all the water is falling in one direction or the other. We also really like to kind of stagger them. Occasionally we'll spread them apart and put a little bit more gaps in between them. It really is just kind of on a job by job basis how we feel the basalts are going to look best put together. This one we put that cluster nice and tight just because I think that's the way that the rocks were kind of talking to us and telling us what to do with them. But we wanted to make sure that we're getting water to fall off the low point there. You can see the low point is here on this rock so all that water is going to kind of come this way whereas this one is now going back this way. So this will kind of fall onto here, hit this rock and then kind of splash and come out that way and this will kind of come off to the side and we will get a little bit coming back behind it. We also when doing this taking into consideration the positioning on the top of the aqua basin we don't want them too far forward, backwards, left or right. We want to make sure that we can contain all of that splash that's going to come off of these basalt rocks with the pump that is provided which is the Ultra 2000. So we're going to split up the Ultra 2000 between the three basalts and get a nice ripply action. Pro tip that we also do is we also always bring out an extra bib liner. So that's about a seven and a half by seven and a half piece of liner that we're going to drape over the top of this thing to expand the footprint of the reservoir. Not the volume but just the footprint and try and capture as much of that splash coming off of these as possible. Funneling it back in and we're going to slope that bib liner back down on top of the basin to try and collect as much of that splash off of these basalt rocks as humanly possible and funneling it back in. Before we get to that bib liner the next step is going to be leaning these basalt rocks over to the side and finding out where we need to drill our holes to bring that kink free pipe up through the top of these basalt rocks. Oh, what do we got there, Josh? Is that a pro tip? It's a pro tip. That's a pro tip. So what Josh just did is he dropped a piece of gravel down. Now he's going to lean it off to the side and we are gonna find that gravel. Oh, right there. Good thing. Almost. Do not drill, almost. <laughs> you are so smart. All right, excellent pro tip there. Drop a piece of gravel down. Make sure that it's small enough that it will freely flow through. You don't wanna clog up uh, that cored out portion of the basalt rock. That's an excellent job by Josh to figure out where exactly that hole needs to be drilled. So we're gonna mark out where those two pieces of gravel are and we're gonna drill that out with a one inch hole so that we can easily slide our kink free pipe through to get down to the pump. And we'll do the same for the other two. All right, so Josh is gonna finish up threading that pipe through the small basalt rock. You can see we've got our hole drilled out right there. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull out any excess tubing from the top. So we're gonna pull that pipe down through by pulling it from the inside of the aqua basin. We'll work on getting that pump hooked up to the manifold, which is that three-way splitter that comes out of the top of the ultra pump. Go ahead and get that thing done. And then I'm gonna show you guys how we lay that bib liner over. All right, so Josh has finished pulling the excess tubing back down into the aqua basin and kind of trimming things up. What we'll do is, because that three-quarter kink-free pipe is a little bit smaller outer diameter than the actual core that's drilled through the basalt columns, is we're gonna take some of our silicone and I'm gonna go ahead and just put a bead around the top of that to help seal up any gaps between the inside of the core and the outside of that kink-free pipe. While we do that, we're also going to install our Ultra 2000 pump. You can see it's got this very convenient three-way splitter or manifold also known as a manifold at the top of it and it has this nice little elbow that is a threaded connection which makes it very nice to disconnect the pump rather and if you ever need to service the pump that way you don't have to undo all of the fittings so the respective three quarter inch king free lines will go to each the barb fittings coming off of the manifold you can see we have the ball valves right here they're nice they're very ergonomic and then these are the ball valves that are used to adjust the water flow to the respective basalt columns to do that I like to give my myself a little bit extra so you can see I've got about another 18 inches of piping for all three respective basalt columns. Let's get the third one out of here and I have them all basically the same. So I'm going to go ahead and attach everything right outside of the aqua basin and then I will drop this pump down inside. We're going to go ahead and start getting this thing filled while we are finishing up the bib liner and the gravel and the finishing touches.
So it's that easy. It literally is 15 seconds of connecting all that stuff. Josh is going to close all the ball valves, go ahead and insert the pump back down into the aqua basin through the access panel. And the reason that those ball valves are all closed is so that when this thing fills up with water and we plug that pump in, he can really fine tune those ball valves and the amount of water volume going to the respective uh, basalt columns. The one that I always like to adjust last is always that middle one. I like to do the two outside ones first and then I like to adjust the middle one. And the reason for that is the majority of that water is gonna wanna shoot straight out that way. So I will dial in the two outside ones and then I will fine tune that middle one and that will really get us to dial in that flow appropriately. So I've got a scrap piece of liner here. It's about five by about eight. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it to about a five by six, five by seven, and then I'm gonna cut a hole in the center and what that's gonna do is that's gonna drape over the top of those basalt columns and I'm gonna install it on top of the reservoir itself, expanding the footprint of that splash zone. So I've got my bib liner in place now. Pump access port is right there. We have it filling. I'm gonna go ahead and get a couple accent rocks and then we're gonna start graveling all this area and blending the existing landscape into and around the basalt columns in order to really finish this thing off and set it off. All right, so we are wrapped up with our first project of the day. As you can see, the basalt columns really fit this space perfectly. You can see how it's really framed out by the arbor behind it. Also notice um, how far out we took that gravel. Again, remember that bib liner is installed there. We actually ended up bringing it underneath the turf over here as well because we were getting a considerable amount of splash along this front edge. So we just wanna make sure that we can get all of that water or as much of that water back into the basin all the time as we can, preventing the homeowner from having to fill this thing as frequently as maybe they would without that bib liner. So it's just a little bit of, I guess, cheap, not cheap insurance, but it's it's a cost-effective way to just help with the necessary maintenance for the customer after we leave. It turned out great. I think we got it done in about an hour and a half, Josh. Two hours, we'll say four man hours, but we also had to take time to teach you guys out there our installation process, as well as showing you the finished product and helping you with some of those pro tips. So we're gonna continue on. We have another Aqua Basin install after this. You guys are gonna follow us along on that journey. So we are 50% done with our day. And what do you think, Josh? Should we get out of here? Hmm? If Josh says yes, let's go, let's go. So we just showed up at the property of the second large aqua basin installed for the day and it is a beautiful property. I love it. It's got so many shrubs and perennials and mature plants. Directly behind me is where we are going to be installing the aqua basin and it's going to be three more basalt rocks which was provided by the homeowner. So this right here, we'll have to pull up the grasses. We'll probably pull this light off to the side, pull the hyacinths up and out. I'll move a couple of the hookra, but that basin is going to sit right in here and then those basalt rocks are going to be nice nestled in in between all these shrubs. It's gonna be a really, really nice backdrop. The only thing different about this job is we are going to finish it off with these black Mexican river pebbles, which are a very, very nice, elegant look to finish off the top of the basin. And they match very nicely with the basalts. All right, so we got the basin installed. We are 99.8% done backfilling. You can see Josh just kind of working out some of the clumps in the dirt. Uh, we ran into a little bit more difficult digging conditions than we had on the last project, especially because we had to dig this one down into the ground, whereas the hole was already there on the first job like you saw. So you can see we still have it recessed just a little bit lower than the patio height here. We went off the patio height as opposed to that edging because the edging is going to be redone. So just to give you guys a frame of reference. So you can see Josh kind of fine tuning that soil. Next step's gonna be get those basalt columns situated and then we can figure out where our plumbing's gonna go, then hook up the plumbing. And then we also have lights that we're going to install. So I'll show you guys on this video how we like to light up the basalt columns and how to hide those cords. All right, so we've got the basalt rocks kind of set up the way we want them. Really excited to see how this one turns out, finished product. So stay tuned and we will get back to you in just a second absolutely finished. You can see we've got the Mexican pebbles, which are a much different look than what we had earlier with the red flint. A little bit more contemporary and modern looking, but it just turned out beautiful. The customer had a nice set of basalt rocks that they inherited from a friend of theirs. So we just installed the aqua basin, brought the Mexican pebbles, the pump, and the plumbing, and they had the basalt rocks. Oh, and the lights. There's three one watt lights. There's one right about there, there, and then just behind that grass that will illuminate these at night and just really make the drops of water look like 
like silver raindrops at night, which will just be an outstanding look. Get that shimmery kind of look to the basalt rocks. It just turned out incredible. Josh, you did a fantastic job today, young man. So did you. We're gonna kind of clean up. We're gonna settle up with the customer, but I do have some closing thoughts that I wanna leave you with. So give me a couple seconds, put the camera down and I'll come right back. here at Aqualand. I neglected to remember that I wanted to share a few things with you before we ended this video. It has been a very quick day. Actually, it's been a total of, I think Josh and I figured out, a total of 12 man hours today between the two of us out there working. And with that said, we generated over six grand in revenue between the two projects. You guys do the math. The fountainscapes are super profitable. We definitely didn't need this entire Isuzu truck, but it's what we had all the rest of our service vehicles are out there you guys and girls out there can do this out of back of a pickup truck and maybe a little dump trailer you just need a wheelbarrow a ball cart a few shovels and a strong back and you guys can be making that kind of cash too so i just wanted to show you what's possible it's very early in the day we're actually going to go out and split up and go take care of some fix-its on some of the ponds that need to be taken care of so i'm going to let you guys go listen if you guys enjoyed this video if you have any questions about the process about some of the things that you saw leave us a comment down below and we will be sure to get back to you thanks so much for watching again if you haven't already subscribe to our channel, please do so and get that little notification bell so that you can stay up to date on all of the Team Aquascape content that we're coming out with three times a week on Tuesday, Thursday, and Sundays. This is Chris from Team Aquascape. I'm signing out. We'll see you guys next time.